Hello everyone, my name is Arthur and I am a PhD candidate at the University of Campinas, Brazil. My research is on the separation of sound objects based on the principle of sparsity, which comprises five stages, namely sparsification, DOA estimation, audio enhancement, audio separation and binaural synthesis. Today I want to talk to you about audio enhancement, which is stage three of my research. Together with my colleague Pedro de Oliveira and my advisor Bruno Mazieiro, we conducted a systematic review on multi-channel speech and audio enhancement using machine and deep learning techniques, which is something we would like to perform during this stage. So, we decided to retrospect the year of 2021 by researching for articles published in English language matching the strings audio enhancement or dereverberation and in the context of machine learning or deep learning. From over 120 articles found, 117 were selected. It's important to mention that not all articles account for multi-channel scenarios. Only 23% of the articles revealed explicitly specify that they are dealing with multi-channel scenarios. But since some authors suggest that single-channel ML and DL solutions can be extended to multi-channel applications by simply processing each channel independently, this has not been regarded as an exclusion criterion. Most articles reviewed were published by the IEEE Digital Library, followed by Archive and Springer. Other publishers include Elsevier, ACM Digital Library, JASA, MDPI, AES eLibrary, Research Square, and University Repositories for MSc and PhD dissertations. Author affiliations are divided between higher education institutions and subsidiary research departments of corporations, which seems to be a nice feature. The countries of origin of these institutions and corporations total 28, yet most research is concentrated in North American, Asian and European countries. Most articles are conference papers, followed by preprints and journal articles. Although the high percentage of preprints could be worrisome, most of these became published in 2022. The most frequently used keywords are speech enhancement, neural network, and dereverberation. Applications are often joint and include, but are not limited to, speech enhancement, dereverberation, noise suppression, speech recognition, and speech separation. Applications' contexts, when provided, are mostly directed to communications, hearing aids, technology, and audiovisual speech enhancement. Most articles consider speech as a signal of interest, while others consider music or do not specify this information. In contrast, most articles consider noise as additive, followed by convolutive and competitive. As far as acoustic signal modeling goes, all articles consider far-field conditions. Regarding system's format or configuration, for articles in which this information is completely specified, most are single-input, single-output systems, followed by both MIMO and MISO systems. Concerning datasets, we identified three main categories, naturally recorded, synthetically produced, and jointly produced. Most of these studies used joint combinations by either adding diverse types of noise with signals of interest at various SNRs or convolving sounds with naturally recorded or synthesized RIRs. The choice for either natural, synthetic or joint datasets directly impacts in the wild applicability, since models trained on purely synthetic data usually don't generalize well when being tested with naturally acquired data, and most articles are not suitable for in-the-wild applications. Most articles reviewed present either ML or DL solutions that are end-to-end -end applications, followed by joint ones, that is, those that either require pre- or post-processing modules. Regarding feature extraction methods, which can be used by either ML, DL or joint solutions, the most used ones are spectral feature extraction methods, which indicates that most architectures are based on image processing techniques instead of audio. Between learning methods, most of them are trained in a supervised manner. 
Others include unsupervised, self, and semi-supervised manners. As for model architectures, it's evident that classical ML and DL architectures like 1 and 2D CNN, BioLSTM, and Fully Connected are still the go-to models for most authors, although some recently proposed models like UNET and Attention Networks are gaining some space, indicating that there's still a margin for technique development. Loss function types vary wildly, although classic MSC is still the most used one, while for the choice of optimizer, SGD algorithms are well established. Most authors prefer not to discuss which backend was used in their work, yet Python-related ones are quite popular. Moreover, most articles are not related to any challenges, while 12% are either challenge baselines or submissions. However, a vast number of articles make use of challenge-related datasets, baseline models as benchmarks, and specially developed metrics, such as data-driven, non-intrusive, subjective metrics for performance assessment. Speaking of performance assessment, most articles used PASC, followed by STOI and SDR. In some cases, performance assessment was also conducted by means of subjective tests, among intrusive subjective metrics, that is, those in which human subjects directly participate, MOS was the most used one. In contrast, non-invasive subjective metrics, that is, those in which data-driven methods are used to estimate human evaluations, were used in 28% of articles revealed. Moreover, semi-intrusive subjective tests, that is, by means of online platforms, were also conducted in a few articles. In summary, if all these studies had a child, it would probably be applied to speech enhancement in the context of communications, which reduces complexity of both problem formulation and solution derivation, since Edge devices are mostly equipped with single microphones with the purpose of capturing voice signals. Since intelligibility of sounds is usually affected by either overlapping sound sources and reverberation, it would tackle additive noise while performing a signal down mix, that is, reducing the number of channels drastically, discarding spatial information. It would either be end-to-end -end or depend on spectral feature extraction methods, and its architecture would be a convolutional LSTM encoder-decoder with skip connections in a UNET fashion, trained with MSC loss and optimized with Adam algorithm. It would also be evaluated objectively with PESC, and if subjectively evaluated, it would be with MOS. Finally, it would also be transformed into a conference paper published by IEEE by some American or Chinese researchers. Now, I'm not saying that this is a bad choice of action, but what if you want to go further? Doing what everyone else has already done will only get you to where other people have already gotten to. In contrast, if you explore uncharted territory, you may find some novelty. Currently, what needs to be done for novelty's sake is to verify whether single-channel enhancement can really be extrapolated to multi-channel scenario, expand enhancement techniques to full bandwidth audio signals, like music, for example, increasing performance robustness against competitive noise, because when additive noise is of the same type of the signal of interest, the performance of data-driven solutions is usually lower. Derive solutions in which spatial audio information is preserved for the sake of virtual reality, Produce a greater variety of real and multi-channel datasets because usually the number of channels of audio samples in datasets is low, up to 8 channels, and yet current microphone technology can go further up to 64 channels. Investigate unsupervised learning for the sake of big data and disentangling model architectures from image processing techniques to avoid reconstruction process like conversion from frequency to time domain, for example.
Also, although most research is still concentrated in North American, Asian and European countries, some contributions from other locations prove that there is still room for institutions from all over the world to contribute to this field of research. It is evident that full bandwidth audio enhancement is still less favored compared to speech enhancement. However, spatial audio enhancement is becoming a highly demanded solution in the context of of virtual reality and hearing aids technologies. Finally, while anticipating the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is expected to see an increase in subjective tests by future publications, yet the perspective of using neural networks to circumvent the human factor on audio enhancement performance assessment remains daunting to say the least. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer.